You already know me, Dio Brando. This is my talk about a problem that uh, bugged me for this last two years. So I can just get into definition and clarification between the difference between bounded contents and microservices. Have a look at this article, smart guy. This is a lightning talk, so I have only seven minutes. Let's make them memorable. And somebody says 10 on the website. Somebody said five in some communication. I'm not going to blame for changing requirements. It's a fact of life, but I stuck on seven. So clarification is not an option, and we get straight into an example. What is my example? My example comes from the cash flow, uh, flow forecast bandit context. The goal was to try to understand more or less how a given organization was, uh, was going and having a look at the financial data for cash flow. So we have the two concepts, only a few of them which are relevant. What is the current cash? In a given moment, that's at the beginning, we have expectation coming in and out for, for yeah, bills coming in, payments incoming, or payments that we have to do, salaries, and so on. This point is what is called the zero cash date, very popular in startup land. And this other distance is the runway, the number of days the organization can survive with the current cash plus minus the expectation. Okay, that's all we needed in this, in this area. A little bit more complicated in other contexts, but this is what we have for this uh, lightning talk. And uh, and this was the start of the discussion. It was somebody saying, like, I need to access the company bank accounts to know the current available cash, the information at the beginning. Or I need to access the issued invoices in order to predict income on given dates because, yes, you have the due date on the bills and you, we are expecting the payment from the customer legitimate yes reasonable thinking but mind your language mortal and uh, when i say i need to access the company bank account to know the current available cash i'm actually making a little bit of a problem which is uh, coupling and uh, well actually it's a little bit more intrusive than, than coupling it's just like i need to I don't want to access somebody else's data. Actually, it's weird. And it is, uh, the problem is deeper. Let's see it a little bit better. It's just uh, this information about the account is in another bounded context, maybe in treasury, maybe something else. And if you want to have real access data about money that is somewhere else, you basically have to access what you have in banks, what you have on credit cards, what you have on other payment systems. And you need adapters to do this. So maybe some mighty product or the yeah, appearance of PSD2 something like, uh, well, this is where we are right now in the current market. And the need to access is actually priming us towards the worst case scenario. Why do I say this? Because business-wise, I have a compelling business focus to see the data right now. And, these, and I have a really minor tactical advantage to know exactly how much money is in the different accounts on, the, on today's date. But in terms of solution complexity this cash flow forecast is just a rich visualization with some yeah extra tricks while this looks like an integration nightmare and what i really hate is just to have a big business advantage or or a cleaning up a current business need we have to do something really complicated that's providing a very little advantage i don't like it so solution space and to read models, I use them a lot in event storming. I use them a lot to decouple the need for a given information from the way the information is provided. Why is that? Liquidity is a concept that we need in the cash flow forecast. How do we make this happen? It's not my problem like right here. I have many possible options, which are still, we can do real-time access, but maybe not now. I could go for daily manual update. I'm checking a couple of accounts and then put into today's data which is going to change during the day anyway and uh, well that this fluctuation is about now but the zero cash date is about six months later so i don't need it precisely right now and then there are more decoupled solutions like listening to events and so on or maybe a product is going to happen i don't want to choose right now and uh, second problem i need to access the issued invoices to predict the incomes on given dates once again you don't. It's not this problem. It's not intrusive. We actually had all the data needed. That was really simple. It was this problem. It was the unnecessary coupling between two concepts that 
only apparently were the same. Oh, but it's the same amount in the bill and it's a due date. No, it's not. It just, sorry, billing is only one of the possible sources of cash. And yes, we have other sources, but the thing which is interesting is just like the due date is not exactly the date where the money is expected. It just took uh, one uh, customer that went bankrupt, bankrupt and uh, well, the bill is still due. The money is not arriving in the next six months. Uh, and what is the due date? It's something which is, oh, look like the same concept. It was not. And uh, plus there are other reasons for keeping it uh, the couple. So it's not the same concept. And here it was policies are getting to the rescue. We have something which belongs into the billing, the issued invoice, and something that belongs into the cash flow forecast, which is the expectation. Oh, but they were the same thing, just like, no, they are not. So closing the talk, what's in it for me? One thing I need to access is just primes our brain into highest coupling scenario. I want to catch data, which is in another, maybe microservice, maybe about the context. It was something that was uh, decent, acceptable inside the monolith. It's not really working in a distributed architecture. Second thing, the bounded context is defined by the language, but exclusions are possibly even more important than inclusions. Third thing, read model will provide you options to defer implementation choices, while policies provide conceptual decoupling between two concepts which are similar, but yet not exactly the same thing. So thank you. That's what I had to say.